What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to take a look at a few parallel lines and transversal questions. So let's get started. Now for this first question here, we're told that lines ABC and EFG are parallel. So we could just mark this off in the diagram here. And then next we're told that segment BF is congruent to segment EF. So we'll mark that off as well. And then next we were told that the measure of angle CBF is 42.5 degrees. So that's this angle over here, and we're just going to label that as a 42 and a half degree angle. But the actual question is to find the measure of angle EBF, which is this angle up top of this triangle here, triangle EBF. So what we need to do here is make use of the information that these two lines are parallel and know that anytime you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, the alternate interior angles that are formed are congruent. So that tells us when we have this 42 and a half degree angle here, that angle EFB is also 42 and a half degrees. So we'll just la we're just going to label that down here. So we have another 42 and a half degree angle. So the trick to identifying those, I always look for that Z shape or the backward Z shape. Anytime I have parallel lines, I look for this or I look for this shape here and the alternate interior angles are the same. So then what we also have here is that this triangle EBF is isosceles because it has two congruent sides. And no, anytime you have an isosceles triangle, if you have two congruent sides, the angles across are also congruent. So once again, the angles opposite the congruent sides are also congruent. So that tells us if we're looking for this angle up here, EBF, let's call that angle X. That means if this angle is called X, we could look across from this side and call this angle X as well. Because once again, the angles opposite the congruent sides are congruent. So we could call both of them X. Now we have a triangle with all three angles labeled, so we could add up all of the angles. So we have x plus x plus 42.5 degrees, and that's going to equal 180 degrees. So now we're just going to solve for x here. We'll subtract 42 and a half on both sides. And all in the same step, we're going to oh yeah, we'll put the degree symbol here so that the notation matches. So now we have 2x on the left. And if we do 180 minus 42 and a half, I don't have a calculator out, so I'll just do the long subtraction. So we'll borrow, make this a seven, then we'll borrow from here, make that a nine. 10 minus five is five. Nine minus two is seven. Seven minus four is three, and the one carries down. So we have 137 and a half degrees. Now divide by two, and we're doing this without a calculator. So two goes into 13 six times with one left over. Two goes into 17 eight times with one left over put an extra zero here, two goes into 15 seven times with one left over, and then two goes into 10 evenly five times. So X would be equal to 68.75 degrees. Now, one thing I like to do with multiple choice questions is make sure I'm actually answering the question. They asked us to find the measure of angle EBF only, and since that was indicated with just X, then X equals is our answer, definitely choice two here. So for the second question here, we have another pair of parallel lines. This time it's lines FAD and EHC that are parallel. And we're told that ABH, that segment is drawn, and BC is drawn. So we have here that angle FAB is 48 degrees. So we'll just label this 48 degrees. And the measure of angle ECB, that's this angle down here, is 18 degrees. So we'll just label all that stuff. And we want to know what is the measure of angle ABC. So that's this angle over here, and we'll just call that angle X. So what we're going to make use of is, once again, we have alternate interior angles. So if we look along this transversal here, we connect the parallel lines with the transversal. Notice if this is 48 degrees, then this angle BHC is also 48 degrees. But there's a nice way to solve for X here. We could use the exterior angles theorem. And the way that theorem works is anytime you have a triangle, let's say triangle ABC, and we extend side AC through point C, and we call this point D, then the measure of angle A, that's this angle over here, plus the measure of angle B, that's this angle over here, is going to be equal to the exterior angle formed, which is angle BCD. So this is a really helpful theorem for this question because notice if we focus in here on this angle over here, the 48 degree angle plus the 18 degree angle is going to be equal to X because X is the exterior angle far away from those two angles. So we could just say X is equal to 48 degrees plus 18 degrees 
and that's just going to give us 66 degrees and that's our solution now the second way we could have done this would have been to call this angle in the triangle y and if you solve for y you would get some value here and you could also say that x plus y is 180 so when you solve for y and subtract it from 180 it would also give you 66. So for the next question here, we're told we have line EF intersecting A, B, and C, D at G and H respectively, and GI is drawn in such that, here we go, we have GH, that's this segment here, is congruent to IH. So these two segments are the same. And we have the measure of angle EGB, that's this angle over here, is 50 degrees. And we have the measure of angle DIG is 115 degrees. And we have to explain why AB is parallel to CD. So this is the actual task, is to explain why these lines have to be parallel. But if we're trying to show that these lines are parallel, that's the last thing we should say in this question, is the thing we're actually trying to show. So what we want to make use of here is this angle, angle GIH, is forming a linear pair with angle GID. So if I call this angle over here X, I could say that X plus 115 degrees has to equal 180 degrees because once again these two angles form a linear pair so now I'm gonna subtract 115 degrees on both sides and that tells us that X is equal to 65 degrees so I'm just gonna erase this here and we'll just write in we have 65 degrees for the measure of this angle but now once again we have the isosceles triangle theorem that in an isosceles triangle the two congruent sides, the angles opposite those congruent sides are also congruent. So if this angle down here is 65 degrees, then this angle over here, angle HGI, is also 65 degrees. So now, let's say we're looking at this angle here, GHI. Now we have the measure of angle GHI plus, and we have 65 degrees plus 65 degrees, has to equal 180 degrees because these are the three interior angles of a triangle. So now when we solve for the measure of angle GHI, we have 130 degrees when we combine 65 plus 65. And now if we subtract 130 degrees on both sides, this tells us the measure of angle GHI is equal to 50 degrees. So looking at this here, this gives us enough information to answer this question. So if we look at this, notice that these two angles, angle EGB and angle GHI, are corresponding angles. And we have a very helpful theorem that says if corresponding angles formed by two lines and a transversal are congruent, then the two lines are parallel. Okay, so once again, to explain this, we're just using this very helpful theorem here that since the corresponding angles formed by the two lines and the transversal are congruent, that means that these two lines here have to be parallel. So for this last question here, all the information that we were given is already indicated on the diagram. And the actual question is to find the length of segment CB, and that's over here. So if we think about what we were given, we have this 115 degree angle on the outside. And this angle CBF, the measure of angle CBF plus the 115 degree angle has to equal 180 degrees because they form a linear pair. So to solve for that missing angle, we're just going to subtract 115 degrees on both sides. And we have the measure of angle CBF is equal to 65 degrees. So this angle over here is 65 degrees. And right away, I would say, oh, these lines here are parallel because the alternate interior angles formed are congruent. But that's not the actual question here. The goal is to find the measure of CB, which for now, I'll just put an X. And what we're going to do is we have to note that these two triangles are similar. Now, we could show they're similar by saying these two angles, angle A and F, have to be the same because they're also alternate interior angles formed by transversal AF. Or I could say that I have vertical angles here and these two angles are the same. But either way, at some point, I'm going to say here that triangle DCA is similar to 
triangle and notice I started at the 65 degree angle so I'm going to start at the 65 degree angle in the bigger triangle and I'm going to call this B C is the angle they have in common at the center and then F is that lone angle out that we don't have labeled yet all right so once again like how do I know the letter arrangement I'm starting at D the 65 degree angle I go to C that's the vertical angle and A is the non-labeled angle so in this big triangle I have the 65 degree angle the vertical angle at C and F is the unlabeled angle. So how does that help us out? Well, notice in the small triangle here, I wanna focus in on this proportion or this ratio. I'm setting up the ratio four over six. So four over six, if you think about it, I get to four over six by going and looking at DC over CA. So once again, I'm going from D to C and then from C to A. And if I look at that in this triangle, that's the first letter to the second letter, and then from the second letter to the third letter. That's how I form this. So if I follow that same pattern in this triangle, I'm going from the first letter B to the second letter C, and then I'm going from C to F. So now, how do I translate this with actual numbers? Well, DC is equal to four, CA is equal to six, and that's gonna be equal to, we have BC is equal to X, that's what we're looking for, over CF is equal to 15. So now to solve for x, we could just cross multiply, and we have 6 times x is equal to 4 times 15 is 60. And now just divide both sides by 6, and you have x is equal to 10. That is the value of the missing side. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on parallel lines and transversals. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.